Hey guys, so a couple days ago I made a video where I tried out Dorico for the first time. I've been a Sibelius user for a really long time, but I've been hearing great things about Dorico, so I thought I would try it. By the end of that video I had concluded that maybe it would work for me, but I wasn't completely sold yet, and that I would spend some more time with it. So I thought in this video I would try to write a short orchestral piece, I don't know, maybe 8, 16 bars or something, just to see how it feels. Can I? do some real work in Dorico, let's try it out. So I have an idea a little bit already, uh, just a two bar idea that I was playing around with at the piano. So I'm gonna start by just inserting that. So that's all I've got so far. I have this opening idea. Now I have to decide where am I going next. This is all I had planned out so far. So I think I'm hearing we're kind of in E minor 7, even though we're using this flat 2 chord. We're in E minor. 4 chord makes sense to me, the A minor. Let's just continue with the 9 thing. So we're going to take this whole thing, move it up to here. A minor 7, add 9. But we're going to do an F natural. go to B flat, B flat major seven, and nine. Let's just nine chords all over the place. I'm gonna go with something kind of like the sentence form where I have my basic idea, my basic idea repeats, and then I'm gonna go into some sort of continuation. So instead of going dun, da 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 and then holding on this, I'm gonna go dun, da 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 and then keep it falling down. So we have, and we'll end on a some sort of cadence right there. Probably a five. And then I'll just want to copy that rhythm over. I'm finding copy pasting things for me is easier as a note entry. I still am not very fluent and fluid with entering notes. The, the note input mode hasn't quite clicked for me yet, but that's okay. So what will the chord be? All right, let's go with that. And we're gonna go with an A flat major seven add nine. We're just doing the Seven add nines, that's kind of the color of this whole theme here. Into B, seven, sus, four. And maybe I won't move it down. Maybe I won't move it to the B7, I'll just keep it on the sus four for kind of a fresh, little bit of a fresher open sound there. So notice how I have this lick. Reverse there, slight variation there. should be a B. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times. I'm being pretty consistent. That's what this theme is about. This theme is about that little lick. Obviously there are ways to use multiple motives in a theme, but there's something powerful about trying to keep it as tight as possible, as long as it still works. So in the case of this feel and this theme, I think it still works. You know, I also have to think about my tempo. That feels pretty good. Now, maybe we could break the pattern a little bit. We were here. And then the other thing I'm going to do behind that, just have simple chords, violins. That's going to be maybe oboe. Oh, not not T, X. Oboe. This low strings and maybe bassoon and clarinet. So I guess we'll go low strings and wind. And probably harp actually. That'll be the violins. Let's go with oboe, and then so what's the orchestration going to be roughly like after we get done with that? So I have a gap, about an octave gap between the melody and this lower part. So I'm thinking I could fit some chords in there, maybe some like nice French horn chords. Oh, the C's already in the melody, so let's keep going down. Yeah, that might work. We'll hear it in the actual thing. I don't love the parallel movement between those two chords, but the melody's doing it too. I might just live with it. I don't think in the style of this piece, 
parallel octaves are really gonna upset anybody. So it's probably fine. I'm gonna add the flute with this guy. Maybe octave, uh, but keep this on those low strings, winds, harps. Keep it kind of consistent. I think it's pretty good. I'm willing to throw in some instruments and see how this is coming together. Let's copy some things over. Grab our melody here, drop that. Where's my instrument names? All right, you're gonna be the flute doubled. Can I get you right there? All right, so that oboe is coming in at mezzo piano. And then we'll go forte, except for you. We'll come down, same with you. All right, who's next? Figure out a bass part. I'm thinking I might do some sort of pitsy thing. Let's give you guys to the horns. I can make that a better part. What else did we have? We had these string parts. All right, here's how I'm gonna split this guy up. Yeah, let's bring you down an octave. All right, let's ditch these piano parts that we don't need anymore. We're getting closer. That's just where my hand was able to grab it easily. Like how quick and easy it is to add instruments. That's really nice. All right, you need slurs. Not sure about the ending line yet. You need slurs, you should be mezzo forte, not forte. You should be copied, at least in the heart, maybe on a clarinet. Actually, do I have clarinet yet? No, I don't know why I don't have instrument names, but it's gonna be you, it's fine. No, this is pretty tedious. I wonder if there's a better way to be doing this. Now, if I want bars at the beginning, do I put it here? No, I took away two bars. If I click here. Okay, so I accidentally harmonized, but I kind of like it. And I'm thinking, what if I did it the other time too? Mm, would that work? It might kind of work. I like that, that's kind of a happy accident, so I'm gonna go with it. We'll get rid of dynamics, we don't need to clean it up a little bit. All right, I think I've cleaned up the slurs, cleaned up the dynamic marks. Oh, no, what is this? All right, so one last time, I'll play it through. I do feel a lot more fluid already with Dorico. It's not quite as strange feeling, like I don't know where anything is. And, you know, a few times I mentioned I like how quickly I can grab the instruments and entering dynamics and all that stuff, it feels pretty good. Entering notes, still a little awkward to me, and there's some things I don't know how to move around, like this hairpin is just kind of squashing in, and this one in the harp part, like, what's up with that? And why can't I just spread the harp apart a little bit so I can see that a little cleaner? A couple little quirks still that maybe with more practice and more time, I will figure out, but right now, uh, there's nothing I've done here that I couldn't have done in Sibelius, and it's definitely not improved, you know, I don't see any reason that I needed to use this instead of Sibelius. I probably would have been a little quicker and been able to make a couple little tweaks that I couldn't have. Again, yeah, nothing here in Dorico that I wouldn't have been able to already know how to do. So, you know, good to have the practice, still not sold. Thanks for watching this. I will play this back one more time and I will see you next time.